Today, we're going to be talking about how to export your Premiere project if it's a 5.1 surround mix for DCP creation. If your sound mixer has sent the 5.1 surround mix as separate individual files, skip ahead to the next chapter of this tutorial. Let's start by creating a new sequence. We can go to File, New, and then Sequence. We want to just make sure that these are set up to match your film. For now, I'm just going to use this setting, but you can use the one that matches your source footage. Then we'll go to Tracks. We don't need any video tracks created, and we'll change the audio mix to 5.1. And we can leave all of this as is. I'll click OK. I'll just make a little bit of room here, and I can scroll down, and we can see our mix is set to 5.1, which is perfect. Now I will grab the film file and I'll put it directly on the timeline. I can leave my settings as is and just keep in mind that we're not really paying attention to the video right now. We're just going to focus on the audio. Now it comes in with a stereo mix, which I will mute because we have our actual 5.1 mix we want to add in here. I will go ahead and drag this onto the timeline. Now I don't have any 5.1 tracks already made, so I can just drop it below here and Premiere will make a new 5.1 track at the bottom. Now, once that file is in, it's a great idea to check sync. So find a place in your film and make sure that everything is synced up properly. Okay. I think, thank you. Thank you so much. If you need anything. All right, thank you. As we can see, everything looks good. Now, keep in mind this method only works if your sound mixer has sent you a 5.1 file with all of the channels in one. If you have separate files for each of your audio channels, it's a little bit more complicated. So I'll show you how to do that now. We'll go ahead and create a new sequence. And then we can leave everything here as we had it set up. We'll go to tracks and instead of choosing the 5.1 from the mix options, we'll choose multi-channel. Now I'll go ahead and add six channels because there's six channels in a 5.1 mix. I don't need any additional video tracks. And then I wanna make sure and add a couple more channels here. You can leave all of these as standard by the way. So I'll go ahead and add two more channels, and then I'm going to go through each of these and just label them to match the 5.1 channel mapping. And as I label each of these channels, I'm going to go ahead and set the balance as well. So channel one is the left, and I'll move that to negative 100. Channel two is right, and I'll move that to positive 100. Channel three is center, I'll move that left. Channel four is LFE, I'll move that right. Channel five is left surround, I'll move that left. Channel six is right surround, and I'll move that to the right. Now you'll notice it says panning, but we're actually not panning these tracks at all. We're telling Premiere which channel to use. So if I go to output channel and it's panned to the left, we're choosing track one. For the right channel, we want it coming out of the second speaker. For the center channel, we want it coming out of the third speaker. For the LFE, we want that coming out of the fourth speaker. So I'm just checking these boxes here. For the left surround, we want to make sure that's coming out of the fifth speaker. And finally, for the right surround, we want to make sure that's coming out of the sixth speaker. We'll just hit OK. And now each of these is assigned the proper speaker using our balance. We'll click OK, and we can see we now have all of our channels ready to go. Now that we have our speakers assigned, we can simply bring out each of our individual files for each individual speaker from our 5.1 mix. So I'll grab each of these and we'll go in the exact same order. So left is number one, then we go to right, which is number two. Center is gonna be number three. LFE is gonna be number four. And we'll grab left surround, it's gonna be number five. And right surround is going to be number six. And there we go. All of our files are now laid out on the timeline. And each of these tracks corresponds to a different speaker in the 5.1 surround arrangement. Now, if I actually go through a little bit in the timeline here, you'll be able to see the different tracks playing on the different speakers here with our level meter. Looks good. The last thing we want to do is just make sure that we can bring out the film file on top of our whole project. So I'll go ahead and grab this film file. And what I want to do, because I already know this film file has a stereo track attached to it, I'm just going to use the film strip icon here and just drag the video only to the very top of my timeline here. And of course, just like we did in the last example, it's a good idea to spot check your sync just to make sure everything is playing properly. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll be fine in my soft and comfy chair. Our final step is, of course, to export. So I will go to File Export Media and then we can set up our settings. Now, usually just to start, I like to go into the presets and I choose the high quality preset to match my footage. And under format, I will change that to QuickTime. 
And under the video section, I will choose Apple ProRes 422HQ. We will then go into audio, we'll change the sample size to 24 bit, and we'll change the stereo output to 5.1. And we want to make sure we're doing it in the same order. So L, R, C, LFE, LS, and RS. And you'll see that it automatically corresponds with our source channels exactly the way we set it up. It's very important you put it in this exact order, just like we set it up when we began. Now, once everything's set, you can click export and you're good to go. And if you're looking for an affordable and extremely high quality DCP master, visit us at thedcpcompany.com.